हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू वाई शायस यूट्यूब चैनल दिस इज़ पूजा शर्मा एंड आई एम बैक विद पार्ट टू ऑफ चैप्टर फाइव व्हिच इज़ द नेचुरल वेजिटेशन ऑफ इंडिया सो इन द फर्स्ट पार्ट वी हैड रेड अबाउट द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ वेजिटेशन व्हिच इज़ फाउंड इन इंडिया नाउ वी विल बी रीडिंग अबाउट द फॉरेस्ट कवर एंड द फॉरेस्ट एंड वाइल्ड लाइफ कंजर्वेशन विच इज़ गोइंग ऑन एंड ऑल्सो विल रीड अबाउट वाइल्ड लाइफ विच इज़ प्रेजेंट इन इंडिया एंड the different types of biosphere reserves which are present in our country so before we begin these are the contact details of vaish is if you have any uh, queries related to your upsc preparation or any doubts you can contact on this number you can contact on this number on whatsapp for your test series as well you can even email us and oh, and also you can visit our youtube channel for um, many videos of uh, all the subjects which will help you for your upsc preparation and not only for upsc these subjects which have been covered in the youtube channel they will help you to complete your syllabus of other government exams also so make sure you like subscribe and share this with as many people as possible because these are totally free lectures and they'll give you very detailed uh, knowledge and information about the subjects so let's begin so the forest cover of india according to the state records it is 23.28% of the total land area in the country and there is a difference between forest area and the actual forest cover so the forest area it is the area which is notified and recorded as the forest land irrespective of whatever trees are found in this area whereas the actual forest cover it is the area which is occupied by the forest with the canopy so what happens is i'll give you a very simple example imagine that we have trees so these trees compare them with a umbrella so umbrella the top layer of the umbrella is a inverted u shape and it has a holding stick right so same way the actual forest cover is this canopy the umbrella top part of the umbrella and this forest area is the bottom part of the stick which is that smaller region so many a times what happens is this canopy it is like the hat of a tree a cap type of a uh you we can compare it with a cap like how human beings wear cap like that even the tree the top layer of the tree will have this canopy which is called it's a cap so when we see from the aerial view or from the sky this forest cover it look like it is very much expanded and spread all across but when we go beneath that canopy layers we then we can see the actual forest area so what happens is uh this uh, forest area it is based on the records of the state revenue department because they'll have a proper detailed knowledge of uh, what are the correct measurements of the area of that the forest covers whereas the actual forest cover it is based on the aerial photographs and the sat satellite images so this is same like uh, what happens when we see a mushroom when we see from the top this mushroom will just look like a uh, round inverted u type of a object okay but when we see it from the side side view or from the bottom view we can see that beneath the mushroom there'll be a stick so that is how sometimes it will become very difficult to differentiate between the forest area and the actual forest cover so according to the indian state of forest report of 2011 it is said that the actual forest cover in india it is only 21.05% so this is the real actual forest cover but what happens is this extra which you can see over here it is because of the effect of the canopy so the forest cover it uh, has a percentage of uh, two types of forest one is the dense forest and one is the open forest so th the dense forest they account to 12.29% and the open forest they account to 8.75% of the total forest cover and both forest area and forest cover it will vary from state to state one important point is that lakshwadweep has 0% uh forest area whereas andaman and nicobar islands it has 86.93 percentage so most of the states which have uh, less than 10% of forest forest area they lie in north and northwestern parts of the country like haryana delhi rajasthan gujarat and punjab 
so most of the forests in punjab and haryana they have been cleared for the use of cultivation and irrigation purposes and states with 10 to 12 percent of forest area are found in tamil nadu and west bengal but in peninsular india excluding places like tamil nadu Dad- dadar and nagar haveli and also um, goa the forest area is uh, sorry the forest cover is 20 to 30 percent and the northeastern states the reason why they have uh, more than 30 percent of land under forest is because of the relief and the precipitation the hilly topography and the heavy rainfall so there is a lot of variation in the actual forest cover in the north it is 9.56 percent in jammu and kashmir and whereas in the extreme southeastern region it is 84.01 percent in andaman and nicoba islands then uh, from this we know that it is said that uh, 15 percent of the states in india they have more than one third of the total area which is under forest cover and this is enough for basic requirement for maintaining that ecological balance and for sustaining a healthy ecosystem so on the basis of uh, percentage of actual forest cover the states have been grouped into four regions which is the region of higher concentration medium low and very low concentration so the higher is more than 40 percent and the very low concentration uh, percentage uh, is uh, less than 10 percent then we have the forest conservation so forests they share a very intricate interrelationship with the life that is existing on earth and also the environment and they have a lot of advantages which they provide both direct and indirect to our economy as well as our society So the conservation of forest, it is very important because it is both uh, important from the point of view of survival as well as prosperity of the human beings. And accordingly, what the government of India has done is they have proposed a nationwide forest uh, conservation policy and they adopted a forest policy in 1952, which was further modified in 1988 to make it more comprehensive. So once you're done with this video, make sure that you go and read about these different types of policies which are related with the forests and forest conservation. This will help you with your current affairs as well as uh, in future whenever you need it for revision. So according to the new forest policy, the government will emphasize on uh, ways how forest management can done in a very sustainable way and also to conserve and expand the forest reserve in one side and on the other side they'll meet the needs of the local people so it will be like a win-win situation for both uh, we'll have a lot of forest conservation also going on at the same time you know the needs and resources which people need that will also be fulfilled so the forest policy it aims at uh, bringing 33 percent of the geographical areas under forest cover and to maintain uh, environmental stability and to restore all the forests which had gone through a uh, uh, gone through uh, ecological imbalance and then conserving the natural heritage of our country along with its biological diversity and genetic pool so that there is less chances of uh, extinction and endangered species also it will check the soil erosion extension of desert lands and reduction of floods and droughts so then increasing the forest cover through social forestry and uh, or forestation by growing trees on degraded land and then increasing the productivity of forests for uh, making fuel fodder food timber available to the rural population which are dependent heavily on forests and also to encourage the substitute of wood because burning of wood it causes a lot of pollution so we need to find an alternative way for it and also creating this uh, creating this uh, mass people's movement which will encourage people to plant more trees and uh, active participation of everybody especially women children and you know all individuals and also to stop uh, deforestation and reduce the pressure of on the existing forests So based on the foreign conservation policy, the following steps were taken. So these are the different ways through which uh, 
indirectly or directly we are uh, trying to uh, conserve forests so social forestry it is a management and protection of forests or along with uh, a forestation of barren lands that is growing of tree of on barren lands and helping the environmental social and rural, rural development so the national commission of agriculture which was established in 1976 it has classified social forestry into three categories that is the farm urban and rural forestry so in urban forestry what happens is it will plant and uh, manage trees on the public and privately owned lands which is in and around urban centers like cities towns and these will be in the form of green belts parks roadside avenues industrial and commercial green belts etc and then rural forestry deals with promotion of agroforestry and community forestry so with the name itself we get to know agroforestry is a combination of agriculture plus forests so you will be growing crops also which is agriculture and on the other side you will be growing trees also which is forestry so agroforestry is the raising of uh, agriculture crops as well as uh, trees on the same land inclusive of the waste patches so as i said earlier it will combine both forestry with agriculture which will alter the simultaneous production of food fodder fuel timber and fruits and community forestry is at community level where uh, trees will be planted on public or community areas or lands such as the village pastures temple land roadside canal banks strips and along the railway lines and schools so community forestry it is a program which provides at uh, benefiting the community as a whole and also it provides a mean to landless uh, landless uh, people who can associate themselves with uh, planting trees and then getting benefit of those which can eat, which has a chances of getting restricted by the land owners so the third uh, type of uh, forestry is the farm forestry where uh, the it under which the farmers will go, grow trees for commercial use also and they'll use it for non commercial purposes also on their farm lands like the forest departments it will of various states it will distribute seedlings of trees which will be free of cost to small and medium farmers and several lands such as the margins of agricultural fields grasslands and pastures and land around homes and cow sheds they will also be used for raising uh, trees under the non commercial farm forestry then we have the wildlife of india so one great advantage india has is its great natural heritage in the form of wildlife so it is estimated that about 4 to 5% of all the known plant and animal species on earth they are found in india and the main reason for this remarkable diversity is because of the different types of uh, diverse ecosystems which are found in the country which have been preserved from a long time so over the years what has happened is there has been this disruption and disturbance in the habitats of these wildlife species by human activities and other dev- developmental activities and their numbers have been declining increasingly so the reasons for this is because of uh, habitat destruction industrialization human greed indifference and ignorance hunting and poaching and also ineffective uh, laws um, uh, with regards to conservation and enforcement so there are also certain species which are on the brink of extinction so some important reasons of the declining of uh, wildlife is um, industrial and technological advancements which has brought about uh, rapid increase in the exploitation of forest resources then more and more lands have been cleared for agriculture human settlement roads minings and reservoirs then pressure on forests which is mounted for the uh, for the resources like fodder and fuel wood and also removable uh, removal of uh, small timber by local people who live in and around the forests and also overgrazing of domestic cattle which causes an f- adverse effect on the wildlife and its habitat so what happens is sometimes the domestic cattle or the domestic animals when they overfeed in certain areas the there will be a shortage of food 
for the animals which are living in that region the wildlife which is present in that region so this can also uh, impact very adversely on their lives and hunting also many people think that hunting is very cool and they are very insensitive people out there who literally hunt animals kill them and then there's this illegal trade which takes place across the borders and many parts of animals and their fur and other such things of their bodies are sold and used for various purposes so all this needs to be banned and they have to make sure that there are very strict laws and penalties and punishments be given to such cruel people for animal cruelty also what happens is commercial poaching it has become very rampant and some uh, poaching which takes place it will take place very secretly so by the time any forest department or any uh, government or anybody takes action by that time many animals will lose their lives so there have also been incidents of forest fires because of which uh, uh, many animals will die vegetation will get destroyed their habitat will get destroyed so it is very important to conserve wildlife because it holds great significance at the national level also as well as in the international level because all these are uh, national and international uh, world heritage natural heritage and also all this indirectly helps in the promotion of ecotourism so for in order for tourism to happen there should be something in the country right but if all this poaching and all these things which are related to their decline doesn't stop or decrease then slowly slowly we will lose all our wildlife and then there'll be nothing uh, present in and around for us to see and enjoy so we have forest and the connection with life so forest they provide us with a lot of resources and to a vast number of tribal people forests are not just trees and plants and vegetation it is their home their livelihood and their very existence so as i said earlier that pro- uh, forest provide us a lot of things it is uh, fruits f- fruits uh, sorry fruits food of all kinds then edible leaves honey nourishing roots and wild game and many more things which you can see on the picture and uh, it provides them material also to build their houses and items for practicing their arts so we can see the importance of forest uh, in tribal economy because uh, uh, the resources and the sources uh, it is main for their sustenance and their livelihood and it is believed that the tribal communities they live in harmony with nature and protect forests so what happens is it is also believed that certain tribal groups they even worship forest and certain types of species and animals and tribal people they are very sensitive and how much they take from nature that much they give it back also they just don't keep taking and taking they give a forest time to regenerate regrow and out of a total 593 districts 188 have been identified as tribal districts and these tribal districts they account to about 59.61% of the total forest cover of the country so the geographical area of 188 tribal districts it forms only 33.6 per- 63% of uh, the total geographical area of the country so this shows that uh, tribal districts they have more uh, forest cover it is very rich in these regions and the forest and tribals they are very closely rela- related because the uh, tribals have very good knowledge about the in and out of all the forest uh, activities that takes place how forests are what trees are edible what plants are edible fruits are edible and what are poisonous you know all of this so regarding forestry they have a lot of knowledge which can be used for the development of forests also rather than we treating tribal people just as uh, minor for- forest produce collectors we should actually motivate them and encourage them to participate in conservation 
so wildlife conservation in india the protection of wildlife in india it has a long tradition and in 1972 a comprehensive wildlife uh, act was enacted so this provides for the main legal framework for the conservation of pro- and protection of the wildlife in india so the two main objectives are to provide protection to endangered species which are listed in the schedule of the act and then the second one is to provide legal support to the conservation areas of the country which are classified as natural parks sanctuaries and closed areas so they'll contain these areas where there'll be a core peri- periphery and a buffer zone so this act it has been comprehensively amended in 1991 the wildlife act and it uh, it has made punishments more stringent and it has also made provisions for the protection of specified plant species and conservation of endangered species of wild animals so there are 103 national parks and 535 wildlife sanctuaries in our country so wildlife conservation it has uh, a very important role in the life and well being of human beings so we should make sure that as individuals from individual to society to community and from state and national level we provide full support for the conservation of wildlife and forests in every way possible we should also con- contribute as responsible sit- responsible citizen of this country so this is the man and biosphere program so this was set up for the effective conservation of flora and fauna along with uh, uh, the unesco's uh, man and biosphere program so the government of india in collaboration with unesco's program has set this up so special themes and projects like project tiger and project elephant they have been launched to conserve these species in their habitat in a sustainable manner so project tiger it was implemented since 1973 and the main objective of the scheme is to ensure a viable population of tigers and to main to have this maintenance for scientific aesthetic cultural and ecological values and to preserve the areas of biological importance which will be our natural heritage and for their benefit education and enjoyment of people so initially the project tiger it was launched in nine tiger reserves which was covering an area of 16339 square kilometers but now it has increased to 46 tiger reserves so this is a very positive aspect and the area has also increased to 36988.28 square kilometers of the core tiger habitats which are distributed in 17 states so these core regions will be those regions where um, human settlement won't be there and human and wildlife interaction will not be there so it will be the core region will only be for the uh, animals so the tiger population in country it has registered uh, an increase from 2006 which was 1411 to 1706 in 2010 then we have the project elephant which was launched in 1992 this was assisting states which are having free ranging population of wild elephants and it was aimed at ensuring long term survival of identified viable population of elephants in their natural habitat then this project elephant it has been implemented in 17 states so apart from these two projects there are other projects also like crocodile breeding project project hangul then we have uh, conservation of the himalayan musk deer which have been launched by the government of india hmm this is the main important topic of this chapter because every year some of the other question will be formed from this so a biosphere reserve it is a unique and representative ecosystem of terrestrial and the coastal areas which are internationally recognized within the framework of unesco's man and biosphere program so this biosphere what will happen is um animals their real habitat it will be very huge and you know it will have all the aspects which are needed for their well being so this biosphere reserve it will be like a duplicate type of a 
environment which is created for the animals so that they feel safe and secure and they can uh, dev uh, sorry not develop they can you know they can stay healthy and you know their population will also increase so the biosphere reserve it aims at achieving three objects and i'll tell you what those objects are so there are 18 biosphere reserves in india and 10 biosphere reserves they have already been recognized by the unesco on the world network of biosphere reserves so the three objectives are conservation of biodiversity and ecosystem then association of environment with development so development will also take place of the environment as well as other aspects which are related to it and the logistics which is the international network for research and monitoring so this is uh, the different uh, biospheres their location in the states and union territories where they are found so they are totally 18 you guys can take a screenshot of this and you can make notes on this so this part is also very important you will have to memorize it you have no other choice because this is factual data so make sure that you know that uh, where it is located and the types of animals and vegetation that is found over here then they are uh, giving us a few detailed um, information about few of the biosphere reserves so the first one is the nilgiri biosphere reserve so this is the first of the 14 biosphere reserves in india which was established in 1986 and it uh, has a sanctuary complex of vayanad nagarhole bandipur mudumalai and the entire forested hill slopes of nilambur the upper nilgiri plateau then silent valley and the siruvani hills so the total area of the biosphere reserve it is around 5520 square kilometers and this biosphere reserve it has a lot of different types of habitat and it is mainly the unspoiled areas or undisturbed areas of natural vegetation types with which have uh, several dry scrubs dry and moist deciduous semi evergreen wet evergreen forest so this biosphere reserve one more thing i forgot to mention is it will have vegetation which will be mixed it will have all five types of uh, vegetation which we read about earlier in the last video as you can see in this point literally everything is over here dry moist deciduous then semi evergreen wet evergreen and even grasslands and swamps so it includes the largest known population of two endangered animal species that is the nilgiri tar and the lion tail macau or macau i'm sorry for my pronunciation then the largest south indian population of elephant tiger gaur sambar and cheetal they are found in a good number so these are endemic and endangered plants are also found in this reserve so the habitat of the number of tribal groups which are found over here they have rem they ha it is in remarkable number and uh, they have this uh, traditional modes of harmonium harmonious use of environment so the topography of the nilgiri biosphere reserve it is extremely varied and it ranges from an altitude of 250 meters to 2650 meters so about 80% of the flowering plants which are reported from the western ghats they are found in nilgiri biosphere reserve so then we have the nanda devi biosphere reserve so as you can see in the picture it is located in uttarakhand so it includes part of parts of chamoli almora pitorgar and bageshwar districts so the major forest types which are found over here are temperate forests and a few important species of silver weed and orchids like latifolia and rhododendron is found over here so this biosphere reserve it is very rich in fauna like animals like uh, snow leopard black bear brown bear mustier snow cock golden and black eagle so the major threats to this ecosystem are the collection of endangered plants for medicinal use forest fires and poaching so as i discussed earlier how uh, how bad it is how bad hunting is for animals and also even the plant species have been used for medicinal uses so then we have the sundarban biosphere reserve 
so this is located in the swampy delta of the river ganga in the west bengal over here this region and it extends over a vast area of 9630 square kilometers and consists of the mangrove forest swamps and forested islands so this sundarban it is a home to nearly 2000 royal bengal tigers and the the roots of the trees over here they are tangled and these trees will provide safe homes for a large number of species like fishes to shrimp because fish certain fishes and shrimp they like these hiding places so these roots will provide that proper hiding spaces and small small areas for them to stay and more than 170 bird species are known to inhabit these mangrove forests and also over here the tigers which are found over here they have adapted themselves to the saline and the fresh water environment and they have become very good swimmers so what they do is they hunt scarce prey like the cheetah deer barking deer wild pig and even the macaws so here this sundarbans it is famous for the mangrove forest which is characterized by the haritaira forms which is also known as the sundari it is valued for its timber then this is the final biosphere reserve uh, of the chapter so gulf of manar biosphere reserve so this covers an area of 1 lakh uh, 5000 hectares on the south east coast of india and uh, this is the marine it is mainly famous for its marine life biodiversity and it is one of the world's richest regions from the point of view of marine biodiversity that is all these uh, underwater creatures so the biosphere reserve it comprises of 21 islands with estuaries beaches forests and also the near shore environment sea grasses coral reefs salt marshes and mangroves so among the gulf 3600 plant and animal species which are globally endangered uh, like for example sea cow is also one of the creatures which is globally endangered so this is a sea cow so this is a very cute animal it is like combination of a baby hippo and a dolphin so besides these uh, species even six mangrove species which are endemic to peninsular india are also endangered which are found over here so we read only about these four biosphere reserves that is nilgiris nanda devi then sundarbans and the gulf of manar but please make sure that you read about other biospheres also because when you read about biosphere reserves you will get to know the different types of national parks and wildlife sanctuaries their names where they are situated and what types of animals can be found because every year there'll be a question from the type of wildlife which is found in india or about the location of the national parks so make sure that you are reading all this extra information also and uh, this i hope this video was helpful to you and uh, i'll be back with chapter 6 very soon so till then all the best and make sure that you like subscribe and share these videos with many people possible and if you are interested for your upsc test series then you can contact on this number on whatsapp and also for any upsc preparation related queries you can also email us and visit our youtube channel all the videos which are present on our channels are for free so make sure that you watch them and give us a good response otherwise very soon they will turn into paid courses so uh, till they are till you are getting resources for free make sure that you utilize them in a good way and please uh, support us so that we will get motivated to make more videos for you on many other subjects which will help you in your upsc preparation so until next time all the best and thank you